Hello, and welcome once again to my comic reviews. Apologize I hadn't done anything in the last couple of weeks, I just didn't get around to it. Uh, but I'm going to try and put a little twist on this. Uh, basically what's going on with this is that I get about a good seven to eight books in my pull list, if not every week, every other week. So these reviews might be becoming in, uh, in between a week and two weeks span at a time. Uh, but I'm going to flip it up a little bit different. Instead of reviewing all the books, because sometimes I can take a little bit too long going into them, uh, I'm going to pick three books which uh, I liked or which I heavily disliked, depending on the circumstances of the story. And I'm going to do a little segment in the follow-up, which I call A Shot in the Dark. Shot in the Dark is basically me taking a book that I normally do not read or I've been hesitant about reading, and based upon my judgment of that issue, it could become a mainstay with me, or it could be something that I just rip a new one to. Uh, also this week, uh, among the books I got, Uncanny X-Force did come out. Uh, and during the course of last year, I took and reviewed each issue as it came out, and I was pretty sporadic about that. I'm going to cut X-Force out of this, and I'm just going to save it for its own separate review because I'm still a big fan of that series. And I just feel like giving each book its own review. So that's pretty much how it's going to work. Uh, but for this, I'm going to take the three books and the shot in the dark to follow this up. And judging on how people like it, it will either stay or it will go. So without further ado, let's get down into the redneck reviews. The stack of the south, if you will. Let's start out with Mr. Scott Snyder. That's right, on Batman number five. All right, so we're continuing this thing with the whole Court of Owls deal. Um, Batman is now stuck in this giant maze, and he's been stuck in there for about a week's time in the course of the story. Everybody out looking for him. But we're not really focusing on everybody. We're focusing in on Batman, who's being broken down psychologically. Now, let's face this. Excuse me. Uh, a lot of stories have attempted to break down Batman psychologically. Um, so... Exactly, this is nothing new. But what is new about it is the twist that he goes, uh, that Snyder goes with this. And, you know, we're trying to set out and see exactly how paranoid Batman can become. This maze is a serious mind fuck for him. Like, I'm talking like, there, there are pictures in the center of the maze of everybody who's gone crazy in there that the Court of Owls have hung up, and they're trying to see how badly they can break Batman. Uh, and I'm actually buying it from this. Uh, Snyder does a terrific job with this. Greg Capullo's artwork, a little crazy, uh, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's not really a sufficient enough adjective to describe what goes on, but believe me, the art does reflect the craziness that Batman is going through. You're going to be reading this book, you're going to have to do a little bit of this with it because the panels are just all over the place. Uh, and it's terrific. The ending is really good because we don't know if it's a... If it's a hallucination that Batman has, because he is hallucinating in this maze, uh, and they just break him down badly in this issue. Um, just wow. Uh, I enjoyed the relaunch of the series after having got caught up on it, and I absolutely love this issue. Uh, terrific. Next up. We journey on over into Uncanny X-Men number 5 by Mr. Kieran Gillen with art by Greg Land. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I hated about Uncanny was the art by Greg Land. Now I will say, when he's not drawing people, he's doing good. The scenery and the creatures that are in this issue are pretty well. Uh, but my complaint about it uh, Goblin brought this up is that everybody is smiling. Everybody's got a shit eating grin on their face. Even when things are bad, they're still smiling ear to ear. Um, like, the pictures of the characters in here look like celebrities posing at a red carpet event, and you're going to see the picture on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. Um, and the art kind of detracts from the story quite a bit to me. At least as far as the, the regards of the people go. Now, the story itself is still good, though. Um, 
they're investigating Tabula Rasa, which, if anybody read X Force, it was the giant dome city that Archangel had built up uh, during the Dark Angel saga, and it's got the Genesis thing, like from the Wrath of Khan, going on inside it. It's a constantly evolving uh, world in there, in uh, the middle of Montana. Uh, but Psylocke is being extremely cryptic about it. See, Cyclops don't know that X Force is still around and that she's participating in it. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, but, you know, Magneto knows about it, which also adds a degree of difficulty to things. But what the biggest highlight of this issue is, is something that I've been looking forward to for a while. We get the best treatment of Colossus in this issue. Now, I'll grant you, it's not a good majority of this issue, but it is the best treatment of Cyclops that I've seen in a long time and a moment that I've been looking for since uh, he got the Juggernaut powers. Uh, a lot of people weren't crazy about that, but the, the thing that I was looking forward to was that uh, Colossus and Magic would have some way to bond. And in this issue, uh, they do. There, there's a really, really good moment in between them and this issue. And, you know, despite Greg Land's art, the, the story with the part with Colossus and Magic really made it for me, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, and uh, it, it's really good. I, I'm going to be interested to see where this goes. This may lead into some fallout for uh, the X-Force and the Avengers versus the X-Men, possibly, but we'll see. Uh, overall, despite the artwork, I enjoyed it. Uh, and finally, for my big three, let's go to Mr. Rick Remender on Venom. Number 12, the only spider book that I can stand. All right, so Flash Thompson is being blackmailed by a uh, crime master into going with Jack Lantern to Las Vegas to pick up some mysterious cargo. Each issue of this series keeps mounting pressure and mounting pressure. Um, the symbiote, like, it venoms out. If you thought what it did to the, the hijacker in issue 9 was bad, let me tell you, this is the most bestial venom out that I've seen the symbiote do yet. Like, Flash just loses it in here. Um, and the big reason about that, we, we get told what the cargo is in here. And without spoiling it, I'll just give a hint and say that it's a very nice fan service to uh, fans of the symbiote. Um, and it's really good. Uh, also, towards the end of this issue, there's something that Flash has to do, like, not only is he juggling the Venom symbiote, um, but he also has to do something else, which is probably one of the hardest things to do. Uh, I don't know what he's going to go through with the Venom event that they're going to do next month, but, you know, I wonder how long uh, it'll take before Flash's breaking point just completely snaps and everything just turns into shit hitting the fan. Um, is terrific. The art by Mr. Uh, I want to say, where's the name? Where's the name? Where's the name? Got to check the end of the issue. By Mr. Lan Medina. Excellent, excellent. Everything about this book is excellent. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. Um, I hate that I waited so long getting on to it a couple of months ago, but it's damn well worth it. Uh, and that pretty much does it for my big three. So, let's take that shot in the dark. What book pray tell do I have that I don't normally read? Well, let's see. I'm a big X-Men fan, but let's face it, I'm not a big fan of all the X-Books. And they brought her title around. They had a couple of big events going on about her, this mutant messiah that is Hope. Uh, and while everything started off all right, I dropped this series after the fifth issue, but... You know, I'm kind of curious to see what they do with Sebastian Shaw. I'm talking about Generation Hope number 15. Um, basically, what we got in here, uh, oh, by the way, uh, a writer named James Asmus is doing the story, and Tim Green II is doing the art. The art is very cartoony. But we are focusing with the Extinction Team, and we get uh, Hope's team show up as well. There's a big old fight that breaks out on the island in between uh, the Mutant Liberation Front and the Generation Hope team minus Hope, which is really good. Um, and uh, there's some character development that's taking place in here I'm not sure of. 
Uh, but apparently Sebastian Shaw has been found, and he's completely amnesic. And Psych just freaks the hell out when he sees this guy, and everybody jumps up and beat the shit out of him. But Hope comes up and is like, hold up, hold up now. Like, you know, why are you, why are you beating this guy? And then, like, there's this huge argument that takes place in between uh, Cyclops, Emma Frost, and Hope. Um, and, you know, Emma does something to really make me hate her that much more to Hope in this issue. I will not say what, but, uh, damn. I was almost expecting a cat fight to break out. Um, at the same time, Dr. Nemesis is in this issue. I always love this character. Um, they're examining, like, you know, Cyclops is taking no chances. He wants Nemesis and Kavita Rao to examine him as thoroughly as possible. And, then, like, there's this moment where, um, Emma is calling in to Nemesis every two minutes, asking, you know, is there anything on him? Because they're looking for possibly anything that this guy is carrying that could, like, blow up the island or something. And, you know, Nemesis finally just has enough and just tells her to, you know, fuck off and, and basically explains her only two functions to the X-Men at all in the fact that she's a telepath and she's a clothes horse. That's the only thing. And I thought that, like, that shit right there made this issue for me. I thought that was fucking funny. And, uh, <laughs> um, I, I've had some difficulty getting onto this series. I don't know if I want to read all the issues that came before, but, uh, you know, this is good. Uh, there is one complaint which I must cite, however, and that is the presence of the Phoenix on here. Um, the Phoenix is getting to be like an overkill joke now. Like, it's one thing if you tease the Phoenix Force showing up in the X-Books here and there, because it's exciting, it's good. But it's like nostalgia. If you keep doing it over and over, or it's like a bad, it's like a joke. It's funny the first couple of times you tell it here and there, but when you start doing it over and over again, it gets to be a problem. And this is one of them sporadic things. Like, I know we got that big old event coming up, but still, like, you know, the more that you tease something out there, you just kill the excitement for. Uh, but otherwise, you know, Generation Hope, it was a gamble. It paid off for me. Uh, anybody not on this, I'd say it's worth the shot. Uh, let you judge whether or not you want to get into the series. It's kind of the ending of something, but I didn't really feel that I had to necessarily know everything goes on. Besides, that's why Marvel has recaps. But uh, it's good. And that pretty much does it for my comic review for this week. Uh, please leave your questions and comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed this edition of Redneck Reviews. And uh, if you want to see some more good stuff, uh, be sure to go and check out my good uh, buddy, Chris, uh, the Mount Vernon kid. Uh, He's a Yankee. He does some pretty good comic reviews, and I think you'll have a hell of a lot of fun with him. So until next time, I will see you guys in the next week or two. And until then, have a good one.